Bibles, turn to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 15, Romans chapter 15. Remember, we're going from chapter 1 uh, with the guilty heathen uh, to the end, uh, chapter 16, where we see some wonderful saints. You know that all of us that have received Jesus Christ as our Savior, we're saints. That's what the Bible says. Uh, that, you know, we, the Bible refers to us as saints. That doesn't mean we're perfect people. Um, but we're the saints of God. We're the children of God. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, we're part of His family. And God um, has, gives us, calls us, we're a peculiar people. Um, moving from Michigan to California, mostly what we saw on television were the peculiar people in California. So we thought everybody was a little weird, okay? Let me tell you something, we're the normal people, okay? Um, sometimes we're looked upon as like the old fogies or ne people that don't have any fun in life and just, you know, wait. No, we, we are the people by the grace of, and by the way, just by the grace of God. I saw somebody the other day had purple hair. I thought, I wonder if the church would allow me to have purple hair. I just thought I would look good in that. I saw a kid who had his hair straight up like this. I said, I wonder, would the church, would the church mind if I wore my hair with straight up in the air, flat top about up this high? Would you mind? Okay, that was weak. Okay, I'm not doing it, okay? <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, we, we just want to look um, like God um, has created us and has given us an opportunity to serve him. I had beautiful long blonde hair when I was in high school. I, I want to bring that picture and show it to you sometime, but I keep forgetting, so we'll never see it because I forget every week. But I was beautiful, and just beautiful, and I went to church, and and I saw that, and I, eventually I trimmed my hair up a little bit, and uh, and you know just uh, changed. I had big wide bell bottom pants; they're about this but wide. My pants were, and uh, platform shoes. When I went to church, that's what I wore, platform shoes, wide bell-bottom pants. And um, if I would have lived out here, they would have thought I was John Travolta. It's a good thing I didn't live out here. Hey, John Travolta's at our church. No. And uh, uh, often people, when I talk to them back east, they think that movie stars are actually just linger with us, you know, hang out with us. And uh, so I'll sometimes I'll say Tom Hanks was in church and LJ, <laughs> LJ looks like Morgan Freeman. Uh, L.J. Jeter, he's not here this morning, he's working. He looks like Morgan Freeman, so I'll tell people, we have Morgan Freeman in our church. Um, Dwayne looks like Danny DeVito, and so we say, hey, we got Danny DeVito in the church. And <laughs> you know. But all we are is just people saved by the grace of God. We're in church, and uh, we're living for him. Oftentimes, I'm just thinking about that people that hang out, the homeless people, and my heart wants to weep, to have nobody, to just hang out outside of Walmart, and that's it, for somebody to give me some money, sleep out there in the cold. That's sad to me. You see, we're not out there. And I know some people, some of them made those decisions, and I know that we can judge them, but I'm just telling you, by the grace of God, we're not out there. We're here. And we want to do what we can to help those people. So we go to the mission in L.A. and we strive to pray for people in our community. But by God's grace, we're here and we're, we're growing together. The Bible says in chapter 15 and verse 1, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Father, thank you for your love for us. I pray you'll bless now our time in your word. Speak to hearts. If there's one here, Father, that knows not Christ as Savior, I pray that today they would open their heart and receive him. And thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. you may be seated. So we're looking through the scriptures here. 
we've seen we're just sinners saved by the grace of God. It's just by the grace of God that you and I are in church. And that we're not just lost. Again, I mentioned uh, last week, you know, that I watched uh, a good majority of the funeral celebration or the celebration service for Kobe Bryant. And uh, many people idolized him because he was a great basketball player and won some championships with the L.A. Lakers. And, and, uh, um, and because they knew him because of basketball. They knew him because he played basketball. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, he's just dead. That's a sad thing. He died, his daughter, and the other seven people that were on that helicopter. And so people, people um, are thinking about eternity. We got the coronavirus going around, you know, different parts. That's just kind of strange to me. That, that don't, almost doesn't seem real. Because the Bible talks about in the end times, there'll be wars, rumors of wars, there'll be earthquakes and all kinds of natural disasters. There'll be diseases, you know. Now, we've had diseases. I read something and I, that I think 28 million people died from AIDS around the world. Over the, over the years. I read that. I'm not, I should make sure of that, but it was a large number of people. And they came up for a, you know, the, uh, you know, some treatment for that. And, uh, and so death and difficulty um, is out there. And, uh, and yet uh, we as believers, we're trying to win people to Christ. We're trying to give them salvation, prepare them for death, prepare them for eternity, so that when they die, they'll know they'll be in heaven. And we found that we find that in the book of Romans, the most most popular part, or not part that we would or I would, anyways. I'm sure our missionaries, the Romans Road, um, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And uh, but. God committed his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. To imagine that Jesus died for you, though you're a sinner. The fact that Jesus loves you just the way you are. And when you sin, you can confess your sin. And if when you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. There's nobody like Jesus. And so what we want to do, we want to become like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus on this earth. Never will. There's never been a man like Jesus. He never sinned. It was, it's an amazing thing. I hope you'll go with us in 2021 to the Holy Land. And walk where Jesus walked on the same street. And I didn't see it. Dwayne pointed it out on the road that Jesus carried his cross down. The road is, is very narrow. It's probably not, not even as wide as this, this, this center section, maybe about as wide as this. Jesus is carrying his cross. The people are lined up, they're mocking him. So they're right on top of him. You understand? They're right on top of him. He only has a little space to go down to, to walk through Jerusalem. And he gets to a point there where tradition says... He got tired, he's holding that cross, and he put his hand on the wall. And so there's a spot there along this road where Jesus supposedly stopped and held his hand on that wall. And it's just a special place. People go there and they put their hand up there. I think Dwayne did that. I, I don't remember seeing that the first time because it's just there's so much to see. But Jesus... You know, I, I took a taxi cab, and boy, the young man was Muslim, and I told him about Jesus. He lived on the Mount of Olives. Can you imagine living on the Mount of Olives? That's where Jesus is going to, that's where he ascended, that's where he's going to plant his feet he, when he returns. I, told, I was telling this young boy about it, and he says, are you, really? I've never heard that. I've never heard that. Jesus is coming back, he's going to, Plant his feet on the... I said, yeah. 
there's going to be a great earthquake. Your house is gone. You'll be swallowed up. You're going to be swallowed up in it, you know, in my gracious way that I like to say things, you know. Yeah, you're going to be swallowed up. Can I have your car after you get swallowed up, you know? He's like, and, uh, and so he was a man. He was the God man, God in the flesh. You understand? He was just like you and me. He had a body. He got hungry and, uh, and, and so on. And so he came. He lived the perfect life. He died upon the cross. He rose again the third day. and He's alive forevermore. The book of Romans really, as Mike mentioned, the books of the Bible, um, which I've mentioned here often, this one verse that really, as I think about this Bible study, the thing that sticks out to me the, the most is that is by one man's sin, disobedient, uh, one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So that goes all the way back to Genesis. We're talking about Genesis there. We're in the book of Romans, but that verse is talking about Adam. It's talking about in the beginning. You understand? So we go from Adam in the book of Genesis to 4,000 years later when Jesus comes on. So he's born into this world of the Virgin Mary. And he lives the perfect life. The Bible says, as by one man's disobedience, many or all people were made sinners. So as by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. That's Jesus. So we go from Genesis, now we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, his life. Although every book of the Bible says something about symbolically about Jesus Christ. This whole book's about Jesus. And the Bible says in John, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So this Word becomes flesh. You know how it becomes flesh? When you become a Christian, the Spirit of God comes inside of you when you get saved. And now the Spirit of God leads you. Well, how does He lead you? He leads you from the Bible. So basically, the Bible says we're living epistles, known and read of all men. There's somebody reading your life. Mom and dad, your children, you can teach them the Bible, and you should. But you should show them the Bible by the way you live, the, by the way you love each other, by the way you take the Bible, biblical principles, and let God's Word work in you, and the Word of God lives through you. Jesus lives through you. You see, you don't, you're not the same. You don't look the same. You don't act the same. You understand? You, you, you're, if you had a problem with anger, you, you, get, you get cured of that problem. That doesn't mean you'll always be perfect, but you get better. You understand? You change. If you're more self-centered. So we're looking to go from Romans chapter 1 to Romans chapter 16, and along this process, people become Christians. They get saved. We talk about the children of Israel and the nation of Israel who rejected Jesus. The fact that there'll be a time that they're going to come to Christ. They're not coming in massive numbers. I think we only have one Jewish person. Is there, how many of you are Jewish in here? One? And she drank some bad tea yesterday. I had lunch with her yesterday. She was not something that the Jewish ancestry would approve of. She said, what did you call your tea? But she called it hot or something. And I thought she meant like, you know. <laughs> That's what I thought she said. You know it's bad when you can't hear well anymore, right? I said, did she just order that? Why is she ordering that with me, the pastor sitting with her? You know, when you can't hear very well, you think people say something. It's like, that was odd. <laughs> so we're walking around judging each other. We can't even hear what each other said. 
that was rude. <laughs> so, when you, in your conversations, make sure you have your hearing aid in or just go like this, or make sure you're listening. A lot of times you're watching something else, and boy, did they say that to me? Anyways, I forgive you for that. Uh, for <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, but the Gentiles, we're Gentiles, we're all Gentiles, according to the Bible. We, we believe. We're in church. We're looking for our Savior. It's like old John R. Rice said, a guy got on the uh, elevator with him in Atlanta, Georgia. John R. Rice kind of wore, he wore bifocals, so he, he wore them a lot, so he looked like, he, he would look over his bifocals at you. And guy got on and stuck a gun in his stomach and said, hey, give me your money or I'm going to kill you. You know, the elevator closed, it's going, he looked like this, and said, son, I'm ready for heaven, go ahead and shoot. I'm ready. You can't threaten me with heaven. Elevator stopped, the guy got off and ran from him. You know, how, how can you threaten somebody who's ready to go, you know? <laughs> you see, we're ready. And we're getting other people ready. And God wants us to have an abundant life. You see, the abundant life is found in the book of Romans. Because we, we get to that in chapter, well, chapter 7, he talks about, Paul talks about his defeat. He's defeated so much. Things I wish I, things I should do, I don't do. Things I shouldn't do, I do. He's saying he's a human being. And he's fighting this flesh. He's probably one of, the, outside of Jesus, the apostle Paul, walking on this earth, he's a great man. He's a great man, and yet he wasn't a perfect man. And so we're finding that when we come to Christ, we're not perfect, but we're being perfected. I heard somebody say the other day, they're in perfect imperfection. That's what we are. We're perfectly imperfect. Nobody in this room is perfect. But wait a minute, we've all gotten saved. We have Jesus Christ in our hearts. He loves us. Nothing's going to separate us from the love of God. Nothing. He loves us to the end. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, shall separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus died on that cross. That's, that's chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Chapter 8, verse 37. So no matter what hits us, we're conquerors. We're conquerors. We're conquering grief. We're conquering depression. We're conquering difficulties. Now, it's not easy. And the, the road, God never promised the road to be easy. But he promised always to be with me. He never promised that uh, my path would be easy. But the Bible says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Right? And so he's what, he tells me what to do today. I'm, you know what I'm doing? I'm in church. This is Sunday. I'm in church today. I'm worshiping God. I'm with God's people. That you, God's brought you here. I went by, we went up to Old Glen with the senior saint yesterday, that's where she was drinking, but that, there was a, uh, <laughs> we went with the senior, so we went by, Roy and Danielle got married up there at the one area up by, behind this big barbecue place, and I went to the wedding, it's hot, I'm doing the wedding, I got on a black suit, white shirt, tie, but it was more of a casual thing, so I'm the only guy in that whole, walking that trail with a suit on. You know, and I'm sweating profusely, man. I mean, just, and I don't, we've never had them before, but there were gnats up there, and the gnats are all over me. So I'm sweaty, gnats on me. I'm eating the gnats while I'm saying, do you take, do you take Roy and this gnat to be your lofty little husband? And I was so hot. I said, why didn't I just ask them what I should wear? I, could, I had a nice Tommy Bahama shirt. I mean, just black. It makes me look slim. Looks, looks. 
Oh, I messed that one up. But I told him about that wedding. It was a, it was a wonderful time. Went to that Mexican restaurant. And after I was done with the Mexican restaurant, the suit didn't fit anymore. But praise Jesus, I wore it one last time. But there's so much, listen, there's so many memories. I go all around this area, there's memories, things, joyful things, pleasant things. And we have the difficulties, we all know about them, but God is so good to us. And he loves us. He goes, in chapter 9, he goes back talking about the nation of Israel. And God still has a plan for the nation of Israel. Jesus is going to rule and reign from Jerusalem one day. We got into chapter 12, and it talks about the brethren. You see, we get saved. We, we, get, we get baptized. We're growing in the Lord. But you know what happens? Just like in a home, we had... Uh, we had a family get together yesterday for Ashlyn's birthday. And my brother Vince went up in the jumper. You know, the, those jumpers you rent? He's, I see him climbing up the top. Mike's boosting him over. You know, my brother, 78 years old, inside of that jumper. Oh, he's 73. I'm sorry. I'm 72. Oh, forgive me, gents. 72. And uh, I remember Dorothy Worthington. Dorothy is still alive. She moved up north. She's almost 100 years old. And we had a jumper out back here. And she goes inside the jumper. At that time, she's about 90. And one of the, kid, the kids, one of the big guys went and jumped, boom, and just blew her right out of the door. We caught her. <laughs> Dorothy, stay out of the jumper. I actually think it was uh, Mrs. I can't remember. Dorothy's on the swing set, and she's going down the slide. She's like 90. I say, Dorothy. Come on, you're not going to make it to 100 if she's still living there. <laughs> but so many things, we do so much. To, this is a family. God brought us all here. You're here. Listen, I'm in California because I got saved and God called me to be the pastor of this church. We're born again people coming from different parts of the world in many cases here. I love it, California. I brought my brother around looking at the school here. I said, man, there's people from all over the world here. These students are so wonderful. Let me tell you something. If the United States of America was like Calvary Christian School, with kids from every walk of every nationality, all, and they just love each other, and they go out on that playground and play, and everybody has fun. You understand? They're not looking at what color they are, or what they have, or where they're from, or how much they have. They just come in, they wear the same uniform, and they love each other, and they go out there, and they just have a blast. Do you know that God wants life to be a blast? God didn't save us to be like a bummer. I, you know, send his son, die on the cross, create this wonderful world for us, the ocean. We went to SeaWorld, and uh, my brother Vince wants to ride on Shamu. He says, can I, they wanted a volunteer to go on the whale. And Vince is strapped on him. No, it didn't happen. They used to do that. Well, it was one of the workers. Then. I mean, you see these, these fish, they're just beautiful. Big old fish. Looking you right in the eye. You're looking in that aquarium. God created it all. And you know why he created it? So you go there and go, wow. 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 Isn't that something? You know, God created that for you. So you could just enjoy it. You can enjoy it. The kids made me birthday cards. I was looking at them. They drew them. You know, they just come up to me. Here, Pastor. You know what? They want me. Wow. You made that for me? Thank you. Thank you. You see, our creativity. We love to do something creative. Little notes. You know. And uh, God did all this for you. Created that ocean for you. Created the mountains, the trees, the flowers. I love to go to Palm Springs this time of year. So many flowers out there. And when you just look at it, you say, wow, what an awesome God. What an awesome God. He did it for you. And so here we are, a family. We've been saved, born into the family of God. But some folks here... 
some folks in here were saved on the ark. You know, no, they're, they're older. They've been saved a long time. Other people, by the way, you could be older and still be young. My brother Jim got saved at 59. You understand? Um, some people are older. Now, it doesn't happen that way very much, but sometimes people are older and they get saved. But we're constantly seeing people saved. So we have new believers. We have new babies. Our, our youngest daughter is Char granddaughter Charlotte. We call her Cece. She's just born in the last few months. So yesterday when we were having that birthday party, she just cried. All she did was cry and sleep. <laughs> cry because she's hungry and cry because she wanted to go to sleep. I felt like her. I went in and lay down on the couch. They said, where's dad at? He's in the other room sleeping, sitting up, you know. I ate too much. I ate, I ate the men's prayer breakfast, and that was my duty. And I, I ate with lunch with the seniors. Again, my duty as the pastor. I'm not going. I'm not going to go and eat, not eat much, make them feel bad. Some are drinking, some are eating. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm going to eat something, so I did that. By the time I got to that party, I was just like, I wanted to get in the jumper and just go to sleep. Just let me jump me around. But it's a family. And we're blessed. And we're enjoying one another. What we have to be careful about is that, in our case, we all come from different places. We come from different parts of the country. We have different personalities. We're not all the same. Think of everybody... Everybody in here was like me, had my personality. Would that be great, Scott? No, he wouldn't. Thank you for saying that, Scott. Thank you. I wish I would have dropped you in that baptistry for good. And uh, he's the only guy I had to, I triple dipped him because I couldn't. And that's why he's blessed sitting down front here. I couldn't get him up. I said, Lord, help me. He's drowning. <laughs> so if he gets baptized again, which he won't need to, I'll put a snorkel on him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm good. <laughs> you know. But we all have different personalities. We have different interests. We have things because we're human beings. That's why, like, two people coming together and getting married, two different, completely different personalities, you know. And uh, my wife was quiet. She was a quiet young girl. And uh, she just had to get used to me, you know. And uh, I've told you before, I got a letter after she passed away um, from some friends from Michigan, and they said, you thought we were laughing at you, but we were laughing at your wife's facial expressions when you are telling those jokes. She'd just roll her eyes, oh, here we go again, those same old jokes, you know. That's why people said she wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't laugh, she'd be sitting over here. She's, she's heard those jokes five, and some of you don't laugh because you've heard them not as many times, right? But we all have personalities. But we're here on a mission. You see, the Bible says here, as we go to, again, it talks about chapter 12, the brethren treating each other. 13, it talks about our responsibility with government. God has given us government. We have lawmakers. We have the rule of law in America. And so we vote on lawmakers. You know, the people in Cal up in Sacramento, they're writing the laws for you to live by. And so we want them to write biblical laws. So we have biblical freedom. And again, we believe in life, so we're against abortion. We believe in the families. Adam and Eve were created in the Garden of Eden, so are husband and wife. We believe that God chose Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. So Abraham's the father of the Hebrew nation. And he had, you know... And, uh, and so, um, here we are, by the grace of God, we have America. And so we're, we're in America, everybody in here should vote. I'm not telling you how to vote, but everybody should vote. And get the stuff, get the information, we're going to have a vote. You're going to be able to register to vote right here, in the, out here. If you're like me, you don't want to go stand in line at the DMV to get your license plates. Oh, by the way, I still have to get my, my vehicle fog, smogged. Fogged? <laughs> smogged. i got to get that done. 
You can register to vote right here. You can, you can, you can vote by mail. I just got mine done. I just put it in the mail. And, uh, but you should. That's your voice. You have a voice. And so you vote. You, know, you, you, you just exercise that. And that's what the Bible teaches us here. They're ministers of God. It's who they are. Romans chapter 13, verse 3, for, the, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. In other words, what that means, if you're not speeding, you don't worry about when you see a policeman. But if you're out there, you know, you're, the traffic flows 90, so you're going 85. You know, well, it's just I'm going a lot better. You know, and you get pulled over, you're not happy to see the policeman. That's what it says here. The rulers are not a terror to good, but they sure can be terror to bad. If, you, if you're speeding, you get a ticket. If you break the law, you get arrested. You understand? So they're here to protect us from evil, and God has given us a government, and we have a responsibility to vote. Then we have a responsibility to obey the laws and follow. It's for our protection. And then we get into chapter 14. We talked about new believers. And in this chapter here, it talked about those that, uh, that before they were saved, they worshipped idols. And they would go to the market and there would be meat, certain meat, that you would buy to offer to idols. So now they become a Christian and the Christians are eating that meat. Hey, isn't that, where you, isn't that the meat you buy to offer to the idols? We shouldn't eat that meat. That's bad meat. They, had, they didn't know that meat is just meat. You understand? There's nothing wrong with meat. Just like I, I said this last week, there's nothing wrong with money. Now I'm carrying around a big wad of money here. I got a dollar bill. I should have used a hundred dollar bill for this illustration. But there's nothing sinful about that. You understand? You put that dollar down there, everybody wants that. Back when we were young, Vince, we could have bought a lot at down there at Penny's, right down the street there, right? Got us some candy, a couple Cokes. Now that doesn't even buy the <laughs> doesn't buy anything today. But you see, there's nothing wrong with money. It's when we get the money and it changes us. You see, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the house, but if the house becomes our focus, then we don't, we don't, the house becomes an idol then. It comes between us. Well, I got to mow the lawn. I can't go to church. I got to mow the lawn. Well, I'm painting the house. Well, no, paint the house another day. You know what I'm Go to church. But some people, you'll see them out working in your yards today. I'm glad I'm in the house of God. Amen? So there's nothing wrong. So in and of themselves, we, we talk about gun control. And I, I don't own a gun. I own a BB gun. And I can't find the BBs to it. So it's, it's not going to help me at all. But, you know, people that own a gun, that's okay with me. I've never shot a gun in my life. A BB gun, yeah, I've never shot a gun, but the gun is not evil in and of itself. The evil person picks up the gun. Now the gun can become evil, right? And so we talk about gun control. We talk about different things. Man makes things evil if they're an evil man. And so that's what's happening here. But by the way, we don't talk about that a lot here because that's, that's something that's a private thing. Now, if you live in Texas, if you went to the church where, the, where Rick Webb's going to, I bet half the men in that church are carrying a gun. You understand? That guy, remember that guy in Texas there when he started shooting people? Immediately the guy got up and shot him. They're all carrying guns. In Texas, you carry, that's just a natural thing. It's not because of, I'm gonna, that's just what they do. By the way, we went up to the restaurant yesterday. And the, late, the waitresses were carrying guns. Were those real guns? Oh, man, I'm not going back there. I, I can get an apple pie somewhere else, man. I was like, <laughs> she'd come up, she said, uh, you, are you leaving a tip? And she pulled that gun back. I said, of course I'm leaving a tip. What do you think? What do you want? You know? And uh, so, and so here we are. We're living in this world. We're born-again people. 
We have new people coming into the church. This is a family. And we have, so we have pe new people getting saved and coming into the church. And so we have to, we have to be kind and we have to be considerate of new people. We have to be considered people come from different, a different church, different types of churches, you know. We have our church. That's why we have a church covenant. We have, we have standards for the choir and the ushers and so on. But everybody's welcome here to come and worship. You know what I'm saying? Like in the words, I can get on the plane, but if I want to be a stewardess, I don't think I would be a very good stewardess, but I wear the stewardess uniform, Right? I can go into McDonald's, which I love to do, but if I'm going to work there, I've got to put on their uniform, right? And so it's just, we, we are representing McDonald's or the air, you know, I always wanted to wear a, be a pilot, you know, but um, I'm not going to be because I'm afraid of planes. That's a whole other story. And so here we are. Look, look at here at our passage well, let's look at four, chapter 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, and other who is weak eateth herbs. So they're not eating the meat. So you know what you did? You know what they decided? You decided, we're not going to eat meat. If you have somebody over to your house who's a vegetarian, you're not going to cook them a big steak, Right? Or if you, somebody says something about the birthday, you're not going to withhold that steak dinner from them. Like Dwayne is trying to do with me on that steak dinner. Understand? I, by the way, I respect Dwayne. He doesn't like us mentioning his birthday, so I didn't. You know, he's, he's a little more shy about that. And, uh, and that really is the truth, even though I'm kidding him. But that's okay. You understand? We all have, th we celebrate things a different way. Does that mean one person's right and one's wrong? No. We're a family. And so the Bible says that we're not to judge one another. Look at verse chapter 15. It con continues on along that line. It says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor, for it is good to edification. Now, he's not saying that you should, you know, we're talking about forbearance here. Forbearing the brethren is our first point. And tolerating things. That doesn't mean we live to make everybody happy. But if there's something you can do for your neighbor, not to, to, to that they, you know they don't like, and it's not a big deal. Some people don't like you parking in front of their house. You know, right? How many of you have a neighbor like that? All right, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm going to come over, I'm going to park over there then, James, when I come over to your house. No, you say, okay, I'll park over here. Now, when they have company, they all park in front of your house, but that's a whole other story, you know what I'm saying? So, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to forbear. I'm going to try to get along with them if I can. I'm not just, well, I'm going to do that just because they don't like it. No. The Christian, even uh, in our, in, if, it, if it cost us, Something that we could do, we just don't do it. Look at, look at verse 3. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. So we're talking about forbearance. The Bible says bear. Bear the infirmities. Overlook. Um, the Bible says you ought to. You ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. It, it, it gives us a condition of obligation. And we got a lot of different people in here. So, you know, we, we, we're obligated to, to love one another and to be forbearant or have forbearance in some areas in life. Listen to me. You, you are going to get offended in church. May I say this? You're going to get offended in your family. Uh, may I say that you're going to get offended. When you get married, you're going to get offended. Somebody's going to offend you. Matter of fact, you may get offended today. So what, what do you get offended about? If you get offended, 
well, that's just, uh, offended. Uh, uh, oh, uh, me. So what do I get offended about? See, what I get offended about is something that I want and I like, so I'm just kind of being selfish. I don't like you to say it. I don't like you to do that. So when, when my wife and I got married, we had to work on our offenses. And then we had to work on our defense. Yeah, I don't, whoa, you know. <laughs> and we grew together. We grew in love. We grew, we, you know, the house and the, everything, the car. We had to, you know, different things. You did things differently. I remember when my wife and I were dating, I ate half her food. She would only eat half her meal. I'd eat my meal and her meal. After we were married a little while, she ate her meal and my meal. I said, honey, you got to stop that. That's mine. Order your own. She, I would always say, let's share that. She says, we're not sharing that. You're going to eat all that, and I'm not going to get any. I said, honey, are you, are you serious? She said, yeah. I'm saying, okay, let's order two then. You know what I'm saying? But we used to do that. Well, let's save money. We'll just order one meal and split it. And I eat most of it. She's over there. You know? So we had to learn to grow together. And so listen to me. If we're going to grow the church and have witness to the kingdom out here of ungodly people, we've got to get along with each other. We've got to be kind to each other. You know? And so that's what the... If we're going to get to being those saints in chapter 16, we've been saved, we're sanctified, we're going to heaven, we're on our way to heaven, man, we can't wait to get there, but along the way, we've got to live and impact and love each other and love the new, new Christians coming in and not expect the new Christians to do what the other Christians are doing. And give them time. Bear the infirmities of the weak. We don't li- listen, we don't live to please ourselves. In John chapter 19, in verse 17, John 19, 17. And he bearing his cross. You understand? Jesus bearing his cross went forth into the place called the place of the skull. So Jesus is bearing his cross. When he's bearing his cross, church, he's bearing our cross. He died in my place. He died so I could be forgiven. He died so I could go to heaven. So what we do, I'm not, I don't have to die for anybody, but I die to myself. I bear the cross and say, you know what? I'm not going to do that because that's offensive to them. You understand? I don't want to offend them. Again, I told you, about my friend Mark Rasmussen. They were very conservative in their dress. We were coming back from the beach from Florida. We had flip-flops on, shorts, sand on us. My little girls had shorts on. So we didn't stop and see them. I didn't want to offend them. Their little girls wore long skirts. We were in flip-flops and shorts, heading back to Michigan where you'd never see your feet again, you know, (laughs) because you couldn't wear flip-flops in Michigan. It was April. And every time we went back home, there was a snowstorm. We'd say, why did we come home? And now we live in California where the sun shines. I love California. Amen? And all God's people said, do you love the sun? Would you say amen if you love the sun? Oh, the rest of you are half asleep. Okay, come on, wake up, wake up. No, we love the sunshine. We love the nice weather. But um, you understand what I'm saying? And so... I dressed differently. I remember one day I had shorts on, and I, I wasn't really dressed. I was out at the grocery store, and the Libbies were there. I saw Jerry come in. Is Jerry here? Jerry back? Jerry Esther's not here today. But they're very conservative in their dress. Well, I'm out there, and Connie Libby's in there, and the family's shopping, and I got shorts on at Albertsons. So I'm going down the rows. I'm shopping so they can't see me, you know? I was like, <laughs> oh, no, there they are. The family split up. They were finding me. You know what? <laughs> I didn't want to offend the family because I had shorts on. They're very conservative in their dress. You get the picture? Now, was it wrong for me to have shorts on at Albertsons? No. But when I go to the store, where I go places, I'm your pastor. So I try to consider that. Well, you know, you got to look like a pastor. So I can dress casual. 
But I'm careful. You understand? I do things for you because I'm your pastor. And I want to represent you. Not because I have to dress that way. Because I do it for you. I'm forbearing. And you do it too. And, uh, and that's what we do for each other. We're forbearing for each other. You understand? Um, Jesus said, um, it says here, let everyone please his neighbor for his good and to edification, for even Christ pleased not himself. Jesus lived for others. Uh, by the way, Galatians 6, 2. We're, we're commanded to bear you one another's burdens. Listen, if you have a burden, I have a burden. If you have a problem, I have a problem. If you are crying, I'm crying. If you're rejoicing, I'm rejoicing. We rejoice with Leonard. We rejoice with things, people that, that uh, accomplish things. It's what we do. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we encourage one another. We help one another. We forbear one another. We don't overlook sin. The family is mother and father. Life begins at conception. You know, we're to, we're to honor Israel. The Bible says, I'll honor those who honor you. And so we honor Israel. It's where our Savior was, was born. It's his birthplace. It's where he's coming back to. So we're going to support Israel, the nation of Israel. And so we need to live the crucified life just like Jesus carried the cross. We need to bear one another's burdens. And we need to seek Seek to live peaceably with all men if possible. I'm not looking for a fight. I may get in a fight, but I'm not looking for a fight. When I go to the store, when I'm out in this community, I want to be a blessing to people. If I can bring a smile to their face for a moment. We don't know what those other people are going through. That person down the store that's rude to you, you don't know what they're going through. And you don't know if they have Jesus. You have Jesus. You may be going through the same thing, but you have God. You have Jesus. You're okay. No, you're not okay, but you're okay. You know what? I'm, those of you that are going through something, you know what I'm talking about. You're not okay, but you are okay. Because we're all going to be together in heaven together. If you're facing cancer treatments, God's with you. Is Nancy here today? Nancy's going through cancer treatments, you know? And so we pray for her. We lift her up. And uh, we're all praying for her. And so we love one another. We come in. And uh, you know what? Sometimes people get saved. The hardest thing they have to do is to forgive themselves because they have sin in their past. May I, suggest, may I tell you, the Bible says he removes your sin as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't remember it. You understand? He blesses your life. And he loves you. And so we, what we do is move forward. We confess our sin and we move forward. Let God use us and bless us. And all God's people said, amen. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for this wonderful book. Thank you that nothing can separate us from your love. Help us to be forbearing one to another. Lord, we want this church to grow, but we're not going to grow if we're, if we're not considered of each other and, and loving each other and uh, being a blessing to each other. And Lord, sometimes we don't get to shake a hand or say hello to somebody, but Lord, uh, help all of us to know and understand that you know, the church isn't real big, but it's big enough to where there's different exits. We don't always get to, to say hello to each other. But God, it's not because we don't care about one another. But Lord, help us to be sensitive and uh, just to minister to one to another. Then the new people coming in, to be a blessing to them and help them. We love you, God, and we look to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to sing.